Winter of 1992, the capital of the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic, Stepanagert, and its surrounding areas are subjected to a full transportation blockade. The humanitarian catastrophe threat is there. The lack of food, shortages of water, medicine, and fuel. Azerbaijan is attacking and shelling the town every day, using prohibited armaments. The village of Khojalu is one of the six fire points and has the only airport in Karabakh. In order to suppress the fire points and secure access to the airport, it means breaking through the blockade and is the only way to save 80,000 civilians from the threat of physical extermination. Human rights defender Angelika Chechina witnesses these events. I was in Stepanagert on January 21st to the 25th. The town is still without electricity, there is no water. It is so hard to get any water that one is ashamed to have tea. There is nothing to exchange your food tickets with. There have been cases of swelling because of hunger in the town. Stepanagert resembles the chronicles of Leningrad in blockade. The military operation to destroy the Khojalu fire points was launched on 26 February. A security corridor was left open to lead the civilians out. The Khojalu authorities were informed in advance both of the looming operation and the existence of the corridor. Khojalu resident Salman Abbasov testifies, a few days in advance, the Armenians informed us on the radio that they will capture the town and they demanded that we leave it. We did not receive any assistance. Furthermore, when it still was possible to lead the women, children and elderly people out of the town, they were convincing us not to do it. What was the reason to cheat us? What did our children die for? And who will be held responsible for this? Khojalu former mayor, presently member of the Azerbaijani parliament, Elman Mamadov says, We did know that this corridor is there for the civilians to exit. Azerbaijan's ex-president Ayaz Mutalibov says, The Armenians did leave the corridor which people could use to exit. Azerbaijani journalist Enula Fatuliev speaks. I talked to hundreds of refugees who were arguing the corridor was there and they stayed alive because of that corridor. So why did the Azerbaijani authorities not evacuate the civilians, although they were informed in advance about the operation to come? Khojalu former mayor Elman Mamadov says, on February 25th, at 20.30, a message came that enemy tanks and armored vehicles are taking offensive positions around the town. We informed everyone about this. I asked to send us helicopters so we could take the elderly women and children out. The assistance never came. Ramiz Fataliev, chairman of the committee to investigate Khojalu events, on February 22nd, a meeting of the Council of National Security took place, attended by the President, the KGB chairman and others. A decision was made not to take people out of Khojalu. The military operation was over by the morning of February 26. The civilians still remaining in Khojalu were transported to Stepanagert, where in the conditions of a real famine they were provided with accommodation, food, and warm clothes. The Memorial Human Rights Center testifies, According to the information received from both sides, by 28 March 1992, the Azerbaijani side received over 700 captive civilians from Khojalu, detained both in the city and on their way to Agdam, mostly those were women and children. The same day, when the Armenian side, without any preconditions, transferred to Azerbaijan hundreds of civilians, 
In Baku, footage of dozens of bodies lying on the ground chaotically was shown. It was claimed that the footage was made near Agdam. Both before and after the operation, the territory was under the control of Azerbaijani forces. Who and where were those people killed if, according to the Azerbaijani side, the bodies were found within the territory under Azerbaijani control? and the Armenian side could not approach it until 1993. Adif Yunusov, Azerbaijani human rights advocate, the city and its inhabitants were deliberately sacrificed to the political goal, to prevent the People's Front of Azerbaijan from coming to power. In an interview with a correspondent of Azerbaijani TV, the chairman of the Supreme Council of Azerbaijan, Yakub Mamadov, stated that he was well aware of who had the Khojalu tragedy on their conscience, and it was not the Armenian side. On April 2, 1992, in an interview with the independent newspaper Daily, the first president of Azerbaijan, Ayaz Mutalibov, stated, everything was arranged to have a reason for my resignation. There was a force acting to discredit the president. The Agdam tragedy, just like the other crimes committed by the Azerbaijani political elite for the sake of power, remains unpunished until today. It is exactly with the objective of avoiding the punishment for what has been done, the authorities of Azerbaijan resist any attempt of a comprehensive investigation of the events which occurred at the end of February 1992 near Agdam. Elman Mamadov, Khojalu town mayor. We don't know who to attribute this atrocity to. We don't know whose history will find the guilty party in this matter. Whose history will find the guilty party in this matter?